Hi everyone, I'm Tian Chen Xie from UC Berkeley, and I'm going to present Updatable Private Set Intersection. This is a joint work with Sai, Pei Han, and this work is done by internship at Visa Research. First, we need to define the private set intersection, and that Alice has set X and Y, uh, Bob has set Y, and they are going to compute the intersection of X and Y, and without any other information is leaked. There are several applications such as private dis uh, contact discovery or private contact tracing. And we're going to focus on the private contact tracing scenario because it fits the updatable setting. On day one, we got several cases uh, represented by these four bins, and we got some a client uh, who is getting some contact. And in day two, we got a new several new cases and more contact by the user. And the scale of the data is like following. Uh, a user will may, may meet 10 or hundreds of people per day, and he got uh, thousands of friends maybe in total. And for the client, we got 400 kilo uh, new cases per day and 500 mega in total. A naive solution would incur quasi-linear computation and quasi-linear com communication, sorry, and a linear communication per user per query. So it means that for each query of contact tracing, it needs to download hundreds of megabytes from the user uh, from the server. Our target is to reduce both computation and communication, and it will, it will be sublinear in to the existing set and quasi-linear to the new set. In our work, we divide into the two different variants, two-sided updatable PSI based on DDH and one-sided updatable PSI. The two-sided version will reveal the set into the uh, reveal the intersection to the to the server and the client both. And the one side is more private, it only will only reveal to the client. There are several existing works such as DDH-based, OT-based, circuit-based, and for the two-sided version, we are going to focus on the DDH-based solution. First, we need to define the privacy definition of the updatable setting. Uh, Alice and Bob already get A0 and A B0, and they, they already get an intersection of A0 B0. Let's assume that. And for a new set, A1 and B1, they're going to compute this uh, A set intersect with B set and uh, nothing else. So this is our privacy definition, and we can exploit a little bit. So Alice will additionally know A0 intersection with B1. That's a contribution of his uh, her old set. And her, she will also know A1 intersection with B because this is a contribution of her new set. And similarly for Bob. So based on this observation, we can have a construction. So uh, let's assume Alice got key zero and Bob got K1, that's DDH key. In the first message, Alice is going to send a, a new raise to K0, and Bob can raise to K1 again, so he, he know A new raise to K0 times K1, so he can compare with this old set, and he now know A new intersects with B old. And similarly, Alice will know the A old intersects with B new. Now, Alice wants to learn the A new intersection with the whole B set, Naively, she can run this uh, separate PSI on A new and the whole B set, but this will incur uh, linear communication to the size of B. We, we will not uh, accept that, but we have an observation here. Uh, Bob already know A new intersection with B set, B old, so she, he can replace the B old set with this A new intersect with B old. That, it will not change the result because it's intersecting with B new. Sorry, it is intersecting with A new. So this new set here will be the size of this new set will be the size of A new plus size of B new at most. So this new PSI, new separate PSI, will only incur linear to the A new plus B new size. And now, I let's learn this A new intersection with B set. And similarly, and Bob will learn B new intersection with A set, and they are done. So they can combine these two results and get the new intersection. 
consider one side the PSI where Alice is a client and Bob is the server. Now Bob learns too much additional information in, in, in the previous protocol. So we are going to adopt a new protocol. It's a data oblivious, based on a data oblivious data structure. And for each entry in, in this data structure, it's going to be a back, a back batched of size sigma. And each tree node has capacity of four sigma. So, so each node has no each tree node has node sigma and the capacity of four sigma. And why is it four sigma? Because we want to avoid overflow in, in case that the uh, random distribution is not good enough. And each element is, will be encrypted by Bob's secret key using this additive homomorphic encryption. Here, gray node means that it's filled with sigma expected sigma elements, and a blank node means that there's no data. So, assuming that this 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 picture is a is a B old set represent a B old set, and here comes a B new of size sigma. And now, the Bob will try to push it into the root node, and if it's already occupied data, we, we will employ a split function to evenly split data into left and right child. And now, root node is empty, but left and right child is also occupied. So it recursively split again until it hits the empty level. And here is the level three. Now level three is empty. And now he filled data to the level three and stop the recursing. So now the question is how to define a split. It's actually quite easy because split is with the purpose of split is randomly throw elements into uh, left and right child. So we can define a, hash, a random hash function, hx map an element x to a zero one string, and x is a ciphertext. Uh, sorry, it's a plain text, and for each x at level i, we are going to throw it into the left child if the random hx is indicating zero. Otherwise, it will be thrown into the right child. And in expectation, each node, each bin is going to load uh, sigma elements. And here, the, the capacity of each bin is four sigma, so it will not overflow except for negligible probability. Now consider a query. Uh, Alice has a new here, and consider an element AI. If the hash is 0, 1, 1, 0, we can trace through from the root to the leaf. 0, left, 1, 1, 0. Okay, okay so there are log n <coughs> different bins. And if AI is actually in the B set, the AI must be one of the, must be in, in is one of these bins. So Alice connect all the bins and he should try to randomize these bins by applying a mask. So it comp she put computer mask plus bin plus AI minus, sorry, bin plus alpha minus AI using her secret key. It's a server secret key. And she compute the encryption of alpha using her own secret key. And notice that if the green guy com contains AI, it will cancel each other and only alpha is left. So upon receiving this uh, this mask, the, the, the server will immediately decrypt and get beta equal to this thing. And it will not leak any information because alpha is randomized for each element. And the server also randomly sample gamma and compute alpha minus beta on the ciphertext. So the, the server will never know the result of alpha minus beta. And he uh, masked this result by gamma. So notice that if green contains AI, the alpha minus beta should be zero. And gamma is not relevant here. And the server sent this the whole thing back to the client. Client will decrypt this thing and see if it's a zero. It, it, if it is a zero, then AI is in the intersection. So the client can apply this technique to every single AI and he can she can get the, re the result A new intersect with B. 
How about the AO the intersection is being new? We can use the DDH again, assuming that uh, the client maintaining AO the rest to K0, K1, and uh, there's the BNU comes in, the, the server can raise it to K1 and send it to the client. Client can raise it to K0 again and get the intersection. That's all of our protocol. Any question is appreciated.